Hey guys, I have here my 48 volt, 100 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate Jacoper server rack battery. Jacoper advertises that this battery can communicate with a number of inverters, including the MPB solar line. Now I've spent a significant amount of time over the past two to three weeks trying to get this to work and I just cannot get it to function correctly. So if you're watching this hoping to see how to set that up, unfortunately I am unable to show that. The main purpose of this video is I would like to go over what I have done, uh, the documentation I found, and just see if anybody else has any ideas why this is not working. So like I said, on the Jacoper website it says this battery supports communications with multiple brands inverters, uh, that be MPB Solar, Growatt, Solark, there's a whole list of them there. The problem is that neither Jacoper nor MPP Solar have documentation on how to get these two products to interact with each other. So the Jacoper user's manual provides pinout information on the RS-485 port of this battery. So we can see which pins we need for RS-485A and B. Now the manual for the MPP Solar inverter does not make any mention of the pin assignments on the BMS connector. Their user's manual has an appendix for this. However, it's very specific to certain brand and model of battery, which I assume are the ones that MPB Solar has actually tested with their inverter. Additionally, it says that it is recommended to purchase a custom-made RJ45 cable to contact your dealer for more information. It does not provide wiring information, and I assume that's because they don't want you to connect the pins wrong and end up damaging your inverter or damaging your battery. So I contacted MPP Solar on this, and they happily provided me with their RS-485 documentation. Okay, this is the pinout information for their connector, along with all the protocol information. So RS-485 is fairly straightforward. You connect A to A and B to B. It's pretty much two wires. There is a ground wire, but interestingly, nobody makes mention of the actual ground wire. And I think the reason for that has something to do with forming ground loops between your, your uh, devices and whatnot. But uh, for the most part, I follow the commonly agreeable instructions online, which were just to use pins A and pins B. So that led me to creating a cable, which were pins 3 on the inverter goes to 1 on the battery, and 5 on the inverter goes to 2 on the battery. It's very simple, two pins. The only other thing we need to do is pick the correct protocol in the inverter to communicate with this battery. This battery, along with many other on the market, seem to piggyback on the, is it Pylon Tech? Pylon Tech battery protocol. And I don't know if Pylon Tech is the one that created this BMS and all these other batteries are including versions of it or copies of it or what the deal is, but many of them seem to use this commonly agreeable Pylon Tech, I think is how you pronounce it, protocol. And the documentation in the MPP Solar Inverter Manual says on the address dip switch here in the front, we set number one to on, which is up, and all three of the remaining dip switches go to down or off. I've seen a number of these batteries online uh, from different manufacturers, and many of them seem to have different dip switch assignments. However, one up and three down seems to be the most commonly agreeable option. Now I did want to show too on the inverter that I do have setting number 5 set to PYL or Pylon Tech, so that is set correctly. So on this cable, uh, the right side goes in the inverter, the left side goes in the battery. We can see I've got pin number 3 or blue stripe going to pin number 1, and we can see I've got pin number 5 or solid blue going to pin number 2. Now this battery does have uh, three ports labeled RS-485. Ports uh, B and C are for communications from battery to battery. And these two ports are simply cross-through ports on the inside of the battery. So it doesn't matter if you use B or C. Uh, the port labeled RS-45A is using a completely separate uh, protocol and it appears to me to be a separate bit rate. Uh, this port is supposed to be 9600 uh, baud rate. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the cable for the battery and the cable for the inverter. So we see I've got one up, three down. Going to restart the BMS, and I'm actually going to hold in the reset button to make sure that my settings are accounted for. You shouldn't need to do this, but for the sake of this video, so nobody calls me out on it. All right, so we've got a clean start, cleanly reset. I'm gonna go ahead and turn our inverter and circuit breaker on. The inverter is starting up. This will take a couple of minutes here. Now after a few minutes, you can see we have code number 61, a fault state flashing on the inverter. Back to the inverter manual, code number 61 occurs when communication signal is not detected for 3 minutes. After 10 minutes the inverter shut down, and the inverter does indeed shut down if I leave it wait for that 10 minute period. So what is the problem? It should be very basic, it's literally two pins from one device to the other. Now I have tried all three of these RJ45 ports, even though I know B and C are wired together and A is the only one designed for inverter communications. We have four dip switches here which gives a total of 16 unique combinations. 
I have tried every single one of those 16 unique combinations. None of them work. None of them are successful. I have tried remaking that cable more times than I can count. You can see all of the cutoff RJ45 ends that I have here. I've even tried making a completely separate cable and trying to get it to work using the CAN port or the CAN protocol because both devices are supposed to also support CAN. Um, I've tried changing that setting on the inverter to all possible combinations aside from the Pylon Tech battery. I saw somebody on the forums comment that the uh, lib protocol is used for the CAN bus. Um, however, the lib protocol didn't work on either CAN or RS-45 for me. Now, I did think too that maybe I just ruined the BMS that came with this battery because the cable that the battery includes is just a standard Ethernet cable. And this cable is intended for connection to these B and C ports to wiring these batteries together. This cable is not intended for connection to your inverter. So because I had done that many times, I thought, okay, maybe I ruined the BMS in the battery. Jacoper sent me an entirely new BMS kit. I have changed out the BMS in this battery. Now, I do not believe it's an issue with either one of these devices. I don't believe the cable's are wrong or anything like that. I even went out on Amazon and I picked up this RS-485 to USB plug for my computer. And you can see I wired on a jack on the end here. And I am receiving packets from both of these devices. So I will show you that here quickly. All right, so I've got it plugged into RS-485C just to demonstrate that the pinout of this cable uh, just to demonstrate that the pinout of the pins are correct. So that's going down to this adapter. You can see the receive lights blinking. And on the screen here, we can see that it is clearly receiving data. So we know the pinout there is correct. So now I'm going to use a little RJ45 coupler here and connect the cable coming from the inverter to the RS-485 adapter. And I'm going to turn on the inverter. Now, as soon as I turn on that inverter here, you can see we are receiving data. We are receiving data from that inverter. So we know the pinout on the inverter is correct. The cable is correct. So now I've got the USB adapter plugged into RS-485A, which is the port we should be communicating with our inverter. You can see the DIP switch is in one. All the others are in zero. And there is absolutely no data being communicated on that port. So I am completely out of ideas at this point as to what the problem could be. The only thing I have not replaced is the head unit for the actual inverter. However, if that uh, head unit were bad in the inverter, I don't think we would see any communications coming from it. We can clearly see it's talking just fine using the USB adapter on the computer. It almost seems to me like the BMS in this battery, like the software is missing or somehow that port is not activated. And that, that goes beyond my level of uh, skill set here. I was in contact with the manufacturer, obviously they sent me the new BMS. They told me that they have actually not tested this communications themselves because they are unable to purchase MPP Solar products in mainland China. Now they did tell me that this battery supports this inverter uh, and that seems to be based on the fact that Current Connected is designing their SOK battery and I know that uh, Dexter from Current Connected has gotten communications to work with that SOK battery with the LV6548, him and Will Prowse had gotten that working. And that's what Jack Per Support told me, is that Dexter and Will got this working, and that they used the same BMS in the SOK as in the Jack Per battery. Now, that is a wild claim to me, to say that your product supports communications with something based on a YouTuber getting something working on a completely different battery. So I have been in contact with Dexter, and I did verify that the BMS he has in the SOK battery is the exact same model number and revision as the BMS in this Jacoper battery. Of course, that does not say that it has the same software loaded or, you know, <laughs> it's difficult for me to tell, honestly. But aside from that, I am completely out of ideas as to where to go with this. If you think I am missing anything at all, uh, please let me know in that comment section below. I am most interested in getting this working. I really wanted to have a video out that says, Here's the jack of her battery. Here's how you set up communications. And that just is not happening. So I'm sorry if this came off as a, a ranting complaint. It's not intended to be. But it is a testament to the frustration I've been experiencing uh, over the past few weeks in getting this working. These videos I put out are intended to use these batteries the way the average user would use them. And I can't imagine the frustration an average user would be seeing having purchased one of these batteries, trying to get it to work, and seeing that it is not working. You know, because these batteries are cheap. So... Questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.